big now I'm a big believer in keep it simple. So I'm going to look at this picture and can everyone see the liver? Yeah. Yep. Can you see there are blood vessels in this liver? Yes. Yep. As soon as you see blood vessels, you know you're too anterior. Yes. So all I'm going to do is just slide my hand yeah. posterior yeah. in Jake. Alright? Posterior, posterior. Can you see the kidneys pressure starting pressure to come in here? Yes. Right, yes. The kidney so is retroperitoneal. So it is way more posterior yeah. than you think. This is the potential Morrison's pouch where the kidney abuts the, the liver. All right, so this is where we get the blood. So now that I'm there, all I'm going to do is what we call fanning. Is I'm going to tilt the probe towards Jake's tummy. I've gone out of the kidney. I'm going to tilt the probe down towards the table. I've gone out the other side. So what I've done is fanned through Morrison's pouch. Right, no fluid. But the fluid doesn't just go whee from down here. All right, it takes. It's got a pathway to get to. And sometimes it's still travelling down the lower edge of the liver. So what I'm going to do is just slide, this is his head, this is his feet. I'm going to slide the probe towards his feet. No, no. That's why I had some gel on him. Towards his feet. And you can see now this is the liver tip. The fluid might still be travelling around the lower edge of the liver before it starts heading towards Morrison's pouch. Alright, so I really want to find this liver edge. There's my kidney still. And again, I'm just going to sit there and fan. And I'm pretty confident that there's no fluid there. It'll be blank. So when people use the word free fluid, we're talking blood. They are. Right, okay. Yeah. Why does everyone use oh, the free fluid? It's oh. just, uh, Why do people say uh, anechoic? It's black, yes. you know. Oh. But whatever it is, it's going to be black in itself? Yes. Uh, like, a, like a thick line of black or yes. something like that? It yes. will be. Mm. Yeah, it's, it will jump out at you. Mm. You will notice it. <clears throat> and if there's a laceration in the liver or the kidney, what there, does it look like a black line or...? Ah, well, it can be a bit tricky. So you can have, say, it's, you know, split your kidney but it's still intracapsular, all right, you'll get a black something. Not necessarily, it could be a fuzzy line. Uh-huh. Yeah, but it will... The thing is, you get used to looking at this normal kidney by default, yep. and, and then one different. day you'll just go, what's that? Right. It's black. Oh, the only other thing I know that's black is fluid. It's motley. It mm. won't be nicely contained. It will be irregular, but it will be dark. Yeah, just because at, at footy, when you're looking after AFL games, we're saying, yeah. I feel every abdominal organ I've seen has been ruptured So yeah. at some point. So yes. uh, yeah, it would be nice to be able to pick that up. If it's still intracapsular, yeah. you still have the capsule. Okay. Now, it might be that the capsule is raised and the fluid sits contained oh. between the parenchyma and its capsule kind of... Um, Right. Thingy, so you'll get this bulging black thing. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yes. But keep just looking at normals. Mm. And then you'll. Yeah. All right. So I've got Morrison's pouch. Are you happy with that? But it's sitting mm -hmm. If I just sneak up here, I've got this white thing. Anyone want to hazard what that might be? Is it the diaphragm? Yeah. 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 Just bring that in, Jack. So this little corner here, this little wedge above the diaphragm, would be what? The inferior. Yeah, lateral lungs, costal yeah. margin. Yeah, yeah, that's right, it's lung. But it's not the organ of lung, it's an artifact. Can you see how this tissue looks the same as that? It almost looks like another liver. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a mirror artifact. You never see lung unless it's uh, consolidated and the air's out of it. So this is a mirror artifact which just tells me that this is normal lung. As soon as it's a hemothorax, this would be a black wedge. Alright? Okay, but if you can't see a black wedge and it looks like you've got two livers, then it's a normal lung. Mm. Okay. So what's the reason for mirror artifact? Uh, Any time the ultrasound hits a massive reflector, uh, it's the way that it goes back to the beam, it just creates this. It's a physics thing. Yeah. Um, that's probably the only time you'll notice it. Uh, there are a few other times, but yeah, it's normally if you've got a massive white interface of some sort behind it, it'll just be a mirror of what's above it. <laughs> so that's the right upper quadrant. Left upper quadrant is exactly the same thing, <coughs> except uh, the splenorenal space doesn't have a name. So Ziffy, mid auxiliary, plonk. Can you see the spleen there? This looks like a little liver. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Alright. 
Fancy. Now, if you can see bright white stuff with a grey shadow, that is gas of some sort. Now, it would probably be gas in his stomach. I don't know what he's just had for morning tea. But if you can see, yeah, see the diaphragm there? Yeah, the right, so I could look for a hemothorax uh, here. Blood so uh, from a splenic so trauma normally so goes subphrenic. So it sits in this right. corner here. So the diaphragm would wrap up in there. And it sits <laughs> up here no, no, the before oh, it then goes the down to the kidney. Up. So what oh, I've done is I've looked at this corner and gone, no, that's great. If you've got gas, you're too anterior, I'm going to slide my probe back towards the bed. And now I've got the kidney. Right. Still got spleen, still got this nice subframe, and I can have a there as well. But it's this corner that is the most important corner just here. So you're not looking for the space between the spleen and the kidney as you would be on the other side. No. You're looking at this one. This is your first space. So the fluid will collect there. Uh, anterior to the spleen. Or yeah. superior well, to the spleen. Superiorly right. to the spleen. Below the diaphragm, yeah. superior yeah. to the spleen. I just, I just remember it looked like it, it was pointing out all these things. Okay. Yeah. 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 Right. Good. Good, yeah. 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 Alright, so then the next thing is we're going to look yeah. for a pericardial effusion. Uh, well, you, me, which is, we now you can see my hand way. movements aren't big. Right. They're pretty small. I'm going transverse, so the marker's going to the patient's right. But I'm going to pick up my hand and make sure it's put on top like this. All right. Transverse, I slide away from his if you I'm angling up to the heart. It wasn't normal. Yeah. There's a lot of depth because I'm trying to go through the liver, through the diaphragm to his heart. And you can just see they've got liver and there's his heart down there. I might need to change my depth a bit. Were you at Mercy? Yeah, it was at Mercy. There we go. So this is his right ventricle and left ventricle. And we'll be looking for fluid around no, the outside here, yeah, the pericardial space, and it goes from where the ventricle and the atrium meet, and it runs around oh, that way. Right. But there's quite a bit of downward pressure, and this is very angle dependent and very patient dependent. This is the worst for you ever try to do. Um, so blood tends to stay anterior, or it could be anywhere? It'll go anterior first, I'll show you. <laughs> you can send me all that later. Yeah, yeah, make sure you give me your email. Now, can you see that pericardial effusion there? Can you see the heart beating? Yeah. yeah. See the black above it? So is that a large effusion? Yep, that's it. So it's taken the outline of the liver on the top and the heart wall's beating into it from the bottom. Right. No. That's not an effusion that's going to cause tamponade. So this is just a physiological effusion that I happen to have. It's about 18 months old. Um, if you saw that, you'd go, oh, hang on, what's going on here? All right. It's not big enough to cause a problem, but you might rescan in 10 minutes' time and see if it's got larger. So if it's got larger, well then it is a problem, it's not physiological. All right, but for me, that's just a physiological uh, effusion. In the pericarditis last year? Well, basically, no, if an amateur immune person who... Uh, <coughs> Jack, we've made him pin onto his bladder. Now, there are a couple of ways of looking at bladders. I tend to go longitudinal, so mark it to the head. If you can, I mean, with a patient, you're probably quite happy to find the pubic bone. Jake, I'm probably not going to go through his pubic bone. But what I will do is pop that probe on, and I will slide that probe down until I can find his pubic bone, all right? Or until the bottom of the bladder is on the picture. Right. So what I want to see is this space behind the bladder, so it's either the pouch of Douglas or the retrovesical space. Now if we look at that picture, you can see there's this white fuzzy stuff in the bladder. What's that doing there? That's an artefact, it's called a reverberation artefact, and you'll often see it in the bladder, so don't think it's some sort of bizarre clotting thing. Right? It's an artefact. 
The other thing you'll notice is behind the bladder, it becomes, see how it's quite white just through there? Right, this is a, called posterior enhancement. It's another artifact because there was no absorption of sound there, so it's brighter here. So I'm going to have to turn my game down because if my game is too high, if my game is too high, the fluid here can be overridden. Right? So, and I'm looking at the prostate here, and the fluid will be sitting back here. Like this. Now the reason I've gone longitudinal, the reason I've gone longitudinal is because the fluid could be coming down through the pericotic gutters. So it might be that I catch the fluid here before it's got to here. So from there, all I'm going to do now is slide to Jake's right. Right. And as soon as you see iliac vessels, you know you've gone far enough. If I come back to the middle, I've got his prostate. If I go to the left. I've got bowel gas, and I've got more iliac vessels out here, and there's no fluid. Right. Now, you can do this transverse. So you're looking for fluid behind the bladder. Definitely. That's where it rests there. Right? Yep, yep, behind. Now, if I go transverse, I'm going to angle under his pubic bone, and then I'm going to slowly come up. There's his prostate, so it would be running down here. Right. It would be here. It would outline the seminal vesicles. It would be here. Does it come up? It'd still be here. This is where his iliac sitting there, so it can't be past those. But when I hit the top of the bladder, I would scan higher just to make sure there wasn't a pop of fluid outlining the bowel when it's way down. Right? So that's why I tend to go longitudinal, because it's giving me a historical representation of the, the pathway of the fluid in one snapshot. So in that view, if there was fluid behind the bladder, you would see like an, an arc of dark, yes. like a black arc with a white line representing the bladder. Wall. Correct. Yeah, right. yeah. Or like, so there'd be black, white bladder wall, then black. Yeah. And it would take on the contour of the bladder wall on this side mm. and the contour of the bowel outline on the other uh, side. But in practice, in the patient in casualty of uh, yes. young, okay, young or old.